dear students in the last class we have discussed anova models in which only qualitative variables are used as regressors even though such models are extensively used in sociology psychology education etc anova models are not so common in economics what is more common in economics is a mixture of quantitative and qualitative variables that is explanatory variables consisting of both the qualitative and quantitative variables such models are known as ankova models analysis of covariance models now in the regression context quantitative explanatory variables are known as covariates so the name ankova models in the anova modeling also quantitative variables are known as covariates so, so in the same way in the regression context also quantitative regressors are known as covariates so the name ankova models in the ankova models our aim is to assess whether there is a difference between groups on the basis of say sex race caste community etc qualitative variables keeping constant the effect of quantitative regressors so the name ankova models now let us see a few examples of ankova models it is an extension of anova models consider this model y a is sum of y a is equal to alpha 1 plus alpha 2 d 2 y plus beta x i plus u y where y a is annual salary of teachers d 2 y d2 is equal to 1 if the teacher is male equal to 0 female x is equal equal to teaching experience teaching experience in years now we say that annual salary depends on teaching experience or we want to study whether there is a difference between salary of male and female teachers keeping constant teaching experience now assuming that all the classical assumptions are satisfied and also that expected ui is equal to 0 annual salary of a female professor expected ya given xi d2 is equal to 0 is alpha 1 plus beta x similarly the mean salary of a male professor is expected y given x i d2 is equal to 1 is equal to alpha 1 plus alpha 2 plus beta x so we run this regression and uh, we have two sub regressions one the salary of female teachers the other one is the salary of that is the mean salary of male teachers now if uh, we test uh, the hypothesis that 
is zero. Alpha two is equal to zero versus h one. Alpha two not equal to zero. Keeping constant years of teaching experience. And if uh, alpha is significant, that is, if null hypothesis is rejected, is rejected, we will say that there is a discrimination based on sex. Now the point is, this regression can be interpreted in two different ways. Suppose that uh, you want to study how annual salary increases with the years of teaching experience. But if you believe that the population is not homogeneous, and also that, that is, uh, there are male and female teachers, and if uh, this distinction is important, you introduce this as an additional variable. That is, we introduce sex as an additional variable. And keeping constant sex of the teacher, we can study the relation between salary and teaching experience. That is one interpretation. The second one is, you want to study whether there is a difference in the salary of male and female teachers keeping constant the years of teaching experience. Can be interpreted in two ways. But suppose that the population is homogeneous. You are taking salary of male courses only then there is no need for introducing D2 because gender is not a factor entering into the regression model. Now, if uh, we draw this with the salary and teaching experience, teaching experience, teaching experience and you will get two separate regressions. Suppose that this is alpha 1 and this is beta. This is the regression function for female teachers. Now, this is alpha and this is beta itself. This is the regression function for, this is for female teachers and this is for male teachers. On the assumption that, alpha 2 is, is significant. You have two regressions. And as you can see here, as you can see here, these two regressions are parallel because it is assumed that beta is same for male and female teachers. What I say is, you know, as experience increases by one unit, beta is the increase in salary, say annual increase in salary. Annual increase in salary is same for male and female teachers. There is a difference in the entry level salary only. For the female process, entry level salary is alpha 1. For the male process, it is alpha 1 plus alpha 2. So, it is assumed in the model that there is a difference in entry level salary. Annual increase is same. But if you think that there is a discrimination in the entry level salary and also annual increase, you have to modify this model that we will see in the next section. So for the time being, assume that there is a difference in intercept only. Now it is not a, a stepwise function, it has the usual shape of a regression model. We have, we estimate only one model, but from this model we derive two separate regressions, one for female, the other for male. And this is alpha 1 plus alpha 2. This is an example of an ANCOVA model. Now, 
Let us consider another example. Suppose that we want to regress annual health care expenditure as a function of income and education. Now consider this model Yi is equal to alpha 1 plus alpha 2 d2 i plus alpha 3 d3 i plus beta xi plus u i where y i annual health care expenditure annual health care expenditure x is x is income annual income now d2 is equal to 1 we assume that education has three categories. So less than high school, high school and degree. So one if high school level of education, zero otherwise, D3, one. If a graduate or graduate and postgraduate, etc., zero otherwise. Now the base category is a person with less than high school education. We have only one qualitative variable with three levels. So we introduce two dummies. Now here we assume that as income increases, expenditure on health care also increases. But education is a factor determining health care expenditure. So we want to know whether there is a difference in the annual health care expenditure corresponding to different levels of education, keeping constant the level of income. Now assuming that all the classical assumptions are satisfied and expected ui is equal to zero, expected y given xi, d2 is equal to zero, d3 is equal to 0 is equal to alpha 1 plus beta x. This is the annual health care expenditure of a person with a less than high school education. Now expected by given xi, d2 is equal to 1, d3 is equal to 0 is alpha 1 plus alpha 2 the intercept plus beta xi. This is the regression function for a person with a high school education but less than graduate. Then expected y given xi, xi d2 is equal to 0, d3 is equal to 1 is alpha 1 plus alpha 3 plus beta x. The health care expenditure of a graduate. Now we estimate this model and we test the significance of alpha 2 equal to 0 versus not equal to 0, alpha 3 equal to 0 versus h1 alpha 3 not equal to 0. If alpha 2 is significant, alpha 3 also significant, we will say that the annual health care expenditure of a high school graduate and a graduate is higher than the base category less than. So we, test, we estimate this model, test the significance of alpha 2 and alpha 3. Sometimes alpha 2 may be significant, alpha 3 not, or alpha 3 significant, alpha 2 not, like that. It depends on the outcome. So remember this, when you collect data in these examples, in addition to annual health care expenditure and annual income, you must also note the level of education of the person and construct the dummies D2 and D3 
आशीष की वन की है इसे सेकंड एग्जाम्पल ऑफ एन एनकोवा मॉडल सेकंड एग्जाम्पल ऑफ एन एनकोवा मॉडल नाउ लेट अस कंसीडर वन मोर एग्जाम्पल Consider this example. Why is alpha one plus alpha two, d two y plus alpha three, d three y plus beta xi plus u y plus u y, where y is annual salary of a teacher. Xi experience years of teaching experience. Now d2 i d2 is equal to one if the person is male, so zero female. Then d3 one if the person is white equal to zero otherwise that is black. Now the base category is a non-white black female person. The base category is a black female person. So assuming that all the assumptions are satisfied and also that expected u y is equal to zero, expected y given x i d two is equal to zero. D three is equal to zero. Is equal to alpha one plus beta x. This is the mean salary of a female black person. Female black person. Female and black. Now let us see expected y given x i. D two is equal to one. D three is equal to zero. Is equal to alpha one plus alpha two plus beta x. That is the mean salary of alpha two, a male. Alpha two is one, a male black person. Alpha two is male. Alpha three zero means black male black person. Then expected y given x i d two is equal to zero. D three is equal to one is alpha one plus alpha three plus beta x i. That is the mean salary of a alpha three is one white white female person. Then expected y given x i d two is equal to one d three is equal to one is alpha one plus alpha two plus alpha three plus beta x. That is the mean salary of a white male person. So we run this regression. From this regression, we will obtain four sub regressions. Corresponding to each class, then we test the significance of alpha two and alpha three. And remember this: in all these specifications, as I told you earlier, it is assumed that there is a difference in intercepts only, because these are all intercepts. It is assumed that the slopes are same. That is, as experience increases, salary increases at the same rate. For male and female bosses, if you suspect that this is not the case, then we have to test it. That, as I told you, will be considered in the next session. Now, now I think now it is clear that whether we are using. ANOVA models or ANCOVA models, 
the procedure is clear to you. Be very careful when you use dummy variables, otherwise you will fall into a problem known as dummy variable trap. So ensure that you will not fall into dummy variable trap. Then let us see one more issue. That is interaction effects using dummy variables. Interaction effects using dummy variables. To explain what is meant by this interaction effects, consider this model Y i sum of alpha 1 plus alpha 2 d 2 y plus alpha 3 d 3 i plus beta x i plus u i, where Y i is annual expenditure on clothing. Annual expenditure on cloth xi in in now uh, d2 is equal to 1 d2 is equal to 1 if female and 0 may D3 equal to 1 if the person is graduates, equal to 0 if non graduates. Non graduates. Our aim in this model is to see whether uh, there is a difference in spending by female and also graduates. Now what is alpha 2? Alpha 2 is the differential effect of being a female. What is alpha 3? The differential effect of being a graduate. Now if all the classical assumptions are satisfied, we can run this, we can test the significance of alpha 2 and alpha 3 as usual we can derive four sub regressions as in the earlier case. But there is one undesirable feature associated with this specification. The feature is that the differential effect of being a female is constant across two levels of education. Similarly, the differential effect of being a graduate is constant across two, across the gender of the person. But we expect that in most cases there will be an in or, or stated differently. This specification tells us that female will spend more on clothing whether graduate or not and the graduate on an average spends more whether the person is male or female. This specification is not complete or it is not the most desirable. We expect that there will be interaction between these two characteristics that is education and, and the gender of the person. So if you suspect that when y depends on many qualitative variables and if you suspect some kind of interaction between these qualitative variables then you should introduce dummies not only in RDT form but also in multiplicative form. That is we re-specify the model as y, okay, before that, assuming that expected ui is equal to 0, expected y given x d to 0, d3 0 is equal to alpha 1 plus 
B tax that is expenditure on clothes by a male non graduates then expected by even x d2 is equal to 1 d3 is equal to 0 is equal to alpha 1 plus alpha 2 plus beta x that is annual expenditure on cloth by a female non graduates then expected y given x d2 is equal to 0 d3 is equal to 1 is alpha 1 plus alpha 3 plus beta x then expected y given x d2 is equal to 1 d3 is equal to 1 is alpha 1 plus alpha 2 plus alpha 3 plus beta x the usual specification but if you suspect interaction between dummies this is not enough you introduce dummies in multiplicative form also now let us redefine it as y a is equal to alpha 1 plus alpha 2 d 2 y plus alpha 3 d 3 i plus alpha 4 d 2 i d 3 i plus beta x i plus u i now alpha 2 is the differential effect of being a female alpha 3 is the differential effect of being a graduate then alpha 4 is the differential effect of being a female graduate so if you suspect that qualitative variables interact you introduce dummies not only in RDT form but also in multiplicative form that will be the correct specification in all the cases this will not be there or you can state it differently you introduce two dummies I mean two qualitative variables education and gender you model this like this test the significance of alpha 2 alpha 3 and alpha 4 if this is significant and if you estimate this model it is a model specification error because a relevant variable is omitted you will get a biased estimates on the other hand you estimate this model and if alpha 4 is not significant you can simply drop this term from the model so the message is when more than one qualitative variable is introduced you are supposed to test for the possibility of interaction between dummies also that will be the correct specification now let me complete this session with an example just to illustrate how the data is constructed for dummy variable models Suppose that your data is, the data collected by you is something like this, E1, E2, E3, S1, S2. Now this is three levels of education. This is graduate, so postgraduate or something like that. So this is D2, this is D3, this is female, this is male. So this is female, male, that is D4. Now my model is Ya is equal to B alpha. 1 plus alpha 2 d2 y plus 
alpha 3 d 3 i plus alpha 4 d 4 i plus beta x i plus u i. So, we have two quantitative variables y so, uh, monthly salary. These are monthly salaries in thousands or something like that. X is is years of sorry x is uh, years of experience as we have considered a quantitative variable then we have qualitative variables so let me tell you how we construct data to run this regression now why is here why is 8 10 12, 14, sorry, 12, 14, 10, 5, 6, 10, 12, 20, 20. Now, Remember this, we have D2, D3, D2, D3, D4, then X is also there, X is X1, X2, etc, Xn. Now, D2 is one, if the person is graduates. D2 is 1 if the person is graduate. 1, 1, then zeros in all the other places. D3 is 1 if the person is postgraduate. The data sets are 20. Oh, there is one more here. So, 1, 1, 0, 0. So, 20, 22, then 20, 24, zeros in all the other places. Then what is D4? D4 if the person is made, that is 5 and 6, 5 and 6, 1, 10 and 12, 20 and 4. For all the others, zeros. Zeros. Now we have uh, two qualitative variables. Our data is like this. If you expect that this D4 interact with, that is gender interact with education, D4 into D2, another variable, then D4 into D3, not D2 into D3, because that is the same level of education. So D4 into D2, D4 into D3, that is the interaction terms. So D4, D4 into T2, 10 and 12, D2, D4 into D2. D4 into D2, uh, uh, 10 and 12 here. That is 1, 1. All the other values are zeros. Then D4 into D3, 20, 24. 20, 24. D3, D, D3 into D4, 1, 1 here. All the other values are zeros. So here. So if you have the data, you construct these variables and run the regression. This is the procedure. So remember this, 
Construction of data is very important here. If you commit any mistake in constructing the dummy variables, the end result will be wrong. So first write the model and specify what is D2, D3, D4, etc. Construct the data in an Excel sheet. Then run the regression. Your result will be correct. If you expect interaction, multiply the dummies. Multiply dummies means multiply dummies representing different qualitative variables. Never multiply D2 with D3 because it belongs to the same quality or qualitative variable. So this is ANCOVA models. And remember this, in the models we have considered so far, it is assumed that there is a difference in intercept only, slopes are same. In the next session we will consider how to uh, model, uh, model dummy variable regression models if uh, we suspect difference in intercepts and also difference in slopes.